everybody. Happy, happy Tuesday. How you doing out there? Are you having a good day still? <laughs> you guys having fun yet? Welcome to our show. Uh, we call it the Closing Beat, just a quick stock market update show to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've been covering a lot of ugly the last couple days. I got to tell you, today will be no different. We will continue with the ugly, but we've got a lot more to share with you today, given that uh, we kind of spent our time today just you know, watching and seeing what was going on. So I want to share some of the data and some of the things that we ran today. And um, uh, happy to help. If I help you in some way, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button and all that good stuff. Um, we're also playing a game. It's called Guess the Dow. I, you, I don't know if you can guess where the Dow is going to close next week, but if you're the closest without going over, if anybody is the closest without going over, uh, we'll send you a $100 gift card. Uh, our winner last week has yet to respond with his address, by the way, so uh, I can't carry it forward, sadly, but we'll keep bugging, trying to get their attention there. Um, there's no strings attached. It's not like a marketing game or anything. Just take a shot if you think you know where the Dow is going to close next week. Uh, it'd be kind of fun, so I'm anxious to see where you guys guess there. Also, to, uh, Thursday, we do a class every week for customers at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's live. Uh, I'm going to call an audible on this one. We're going to change our topic this week from reviewing nest egg to reviewing the market and sharing all of the data and stuff that we've prepared. Uh, we've got a bunch of studies and, of course, things about what's happening with the market, so expect us to uh, go into that on Thursday instead. If you're one of our customers, that, of course, is live in the dojo. Hope you'll join us for that. Your Jazz Artist of the Week is Chris Bodie. We've been talking about that yesterday. Uh, we, we're going to have a song every day. I tried to relate it to the market. Uh, it was You Are Not Alone yesterday. Today, Chris Bodie's song is Streets Ahead, more of the smooth jazz kind of side of things. Uh, streets Ahead, man. We've got nothing to do but plow ahead from here. So uh, enjoy that uh, song if you happen to listen to it there. Like I said, we'll probably do a special uh, edition of uh, Closing Beat. I'm sorry, the uh, Wine and Wealth class on Thursday. And I was going to take the weekend off and not do a notes from jazz email, but I think I'll probably have to squeeze one of those out too. Let's talk about the stock market. You lost another 879 on the old uh, Dow. You got uh, 97 on the S&P, another 3% down day. NASDAQ lost 255 points. That's back-to-back 3% -back decline. That has not happened since the financial crisis in 2008. I believe it was November of 2008, last time that happened. Turnaround Tuesday. What happened? Where, where'd it go? Uh, actually, if you look at the futures market overnight, turnaround Tuesday happened Tuesday morning really early. Unfortunately, it gave it all back and, of course, then some uh, going back into the negative. So that doesn't count. Turnaround Tuesday did not happen and does not count there. The S&P was up over 1%. NASDAQ Dow did all the same thing there, but it just gave it all back. Um, and today, by the way, uh, I'll share some of these interesting things with you as we go. But today was more of a power trend lower. Uh, oh, tell me it's not going to do that. I'm going to try something real quick. I'll be right back. All right, that should work. I think I've got a little bit of a trick there. That should work. That should do it. Hang in there. Let's see if it works. I believe that actually do the trick. Yeah, it worked. Okay, cool. Perfect. I wanted to be able to show charts to you today, so thanks for pa being patient there. Uh, YouTube it does its thing there. A anyways, more of a power trend down day here today. Let's take a look. So we've got, uh, I'm going to go to the S&P 500, and we're going to look at that. What I want to show is the five-minute time period. I want to kind of show you how we fell today. So if we look just little by little here, look at the five minute time period all through the start of the day going into the second part of the day. Just a consistent clean downtrend. Notice there was no panic there. There was no waterfall drop. There was no like, oh my gosh, we're falling off a cliff. It was just really slow and steady. So what's that tell you? That's a lot of profit taking in there. That's people that have massive positions over the last couple years or maybe even just last year that decided to take a profit and slowly, slowly edge out of their positions. We talked about this a little bit in December last year. Uh, but that was one really, really important kind of thing there. Very consistent selling. Now, why would you say that's profit taking? Well, think about it. Most of the people that have invested and built up sizable positions over the last couple years or however long they've been investing, they have a profit. Almost everybody has a profit if you've invested in the stock market. Now, if you started four days ago, you, you don't have a profit yet, right? So you'll get there. You'll have your moment. But other than that, everybody who had invested prior to this at some point had a profit. So you got to you got to expect, like, who has a loss? There's no fear at the moment because not a lot of people have a loss. There's no uh, downtrend that then fell 10% or whatever. Uh, it's just a consistent uptrend that then took a little bit of a break there. Now, on the S&P 500, here's the line. I've, been, I've had this line on here for a while. You guys know I've been wanting a 10% pullback, and I'm going to share some data with you on that a little bit later. Uh, but, look, this uh, to get down to here would be 10% from the highs. So we're working on that 10% pullback, and we're very, very close at this point. I'll share with you in just a second. Um, but that, that's like where we're at. It's, it's not 
like all that horrible at the moment, but it really seems nasty because this all happened in four days. So anytime the stock market's gonna literally almost fall 10% in four days, I think February 2018 is the last time that happened. Uh, well, that, that gets to be a little nerve wracking. So you can understand if you um, have a little bit of, uh, if you're kind of nervous about what happened. Now, Larry Kudlow, he came out today. He's like, hey, we've almost got this thing airtight and sealed, protected here in the US. Uh, not 10 minutes later, the director of the CDC came out and said, it's not a matter of when the virus hits the U.S. or if the virus hits the U.S., but when the virus hits the U.S. And his quotes exactly were, uh, disruption to your everyday life may be severe. So they're taking this seriously. Of course, there's like 57 cases here in the U.S. They are uh, expecting, we're about ready to see an explosion in uh, cases here uh, in the U.S. Now, lunchtime today. Uh, I, I just because I can't run this stuff all the time. But at lunchtime today, I was like, what? Wonder what the average S&P stock has declined in the last four days. Like if you just invested four days ago and you're an average investor, you just randomly pick something. What's the average decline in the S&P? It's 5.15%. So the average stock in the S&P 500 over the last four days has fallen 5.15%. That to me is incredible. I want to share something here with you. Uh, your indices, percent declines off of highs. I know you guys are waiting for a 10% pullback. Check it out. We've got the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000 as indicated by the index ETFs because that's easier for us to look up. Um, from the highs, so not necessarily four days ago, but from the highs, the most recent high in the market there, that whether it's the S&P or whatever, uh, this is currently where we're at as of the close of today. The S&P is down basically 8% off of highs. The NASDAQ almost down 10% uh, off of highs. The Dow 8.6 and the Russell 8.56 off of the highs. So if you're cheering for that 10% pullback, we're getting close. Uh, another hour tomorrow morning and we could make that happen at this pace. Uh, so that's what we're going on right uh, there so far. I've got some more stuff to share with you. But first, there are two types of investors right now. This happens every time the markets go down. There are two, two types of investors. There are those of you that wanted the pullback and now you got it and you're like, ooh, I don't know, man. Should I start buying here? Should I really go shopping? I'm a little nervous, right? You wanted the pullback. It just happened quickly. I can understand the concern if you've been looking for stocks to buy or waiting to put money to work. The other type of investor is the type of person that sold today. They saw the market down today. They saw the guy from the CDC and they said, that's it. I'm out, right? So for the type of investor waiting for that pullback, I really want you to feel what you're feeling right now. And remember this, when the markets fall, it never feels good to go and buy stocks. But what's Warren Buffett doing? Mm -hmm. What are all the big investors doing? They're shopping. They're looking to see where do they want to dip their toe in the water? Not, I'm not saying they're diving in 100%, but where do they want to go dip their toe in the water? You got to do the same. It doesn't feel good. Over time, you learn it, it, it actually gets exciting. But if this is your first time doing it, it, it doesn't feel good. There's no other way to say it. Now, if you're the type of person that sold today or you're saying, oh boy, I'm selling tomorrow. First thing, man, I'm going to sell my position. I've got a loss or whatever happened, you're going to sell. I want you to ask yourself, what happened the last time you did that, right? What happened in December of, of 2019, uh, 2018 when you sold? How'd that make you feel to watch everything recover and all of a sudden the world went back to normal? Keep in mind that the stock market is either, there's only two modes of the stock market. Either all is good or the world's gonna end. That's it, if you think about it, right? There's always either really, really good times or the market is, it, that's it, there's no more market, this is it, we're going to zero, that's the end of the day. I don't know, you know, so what's gonna happen? Right, put that into perspective, see where you're at today. All right, enough uh, ranting here for the moment, let's get to the goods. The NASDAQ outperformed the S&P today, which is weird, right? The NASDAQ's been leading us lower. Today, it was the uh, better performer, if you could say that. It was still down on the day, but it was the better performer, as you can see, down 2.7%. The S&P lost 3% on the day. Russell 2000 was your underperforming area of the market. All right, in the Dow, yeah, let's go over to the Dow. In the Dow, which is now down 5% on the year, by the way, you had Home Depot. Home Depot is one of the stronger names, believe it or not. It was positive most of the day until the end of the day. It lost 1%. Uh, they had earnings that came out, and Home Depot came in better, uh, beat on earnings by 17 cents. They lowered their guidance a little bit, but a lot of people think they're not going to really get hit as hard. Uh, they actually said themselves they don't think they're going to get hit too hard. So that was one of the uh, stronger stocks in the area. McDonald's, one of the stronger stocks in the area. No real news there. Uh, just McDonald's getting a bid here or not not selling off as much through the rest of the market and Microsoft. Microsoft only lost 1.65% on the day back to the 50 day moving average. You'd like to see it chop around there for a little bit, 
cool off and then get people excited to buy this thing again. American Express, one of the weaker ones to the downside. Look at that, breaking through the 200-day moving average, lost 5.69%. That's one of the uh, weaker ones in the Dow. It is now down over 12% off of highs, so if you're looking for a discount. Visa also sold off 5% today in the Dow. You, you go, what, what happened? Well, a lot of that was MasterCard, not a Dow stock, but MasterCard lost 6.71%. They lowered their guidance going forward. They said that they expect to take a hit on their revenues of about 2 to 3% thanks to the coronavirus. Um, and so that was that. They lowered their full year guidance. That hurt the other processors uh, as well. In the S&P, strong stocks. You got Hewlett Packard. I th this was hilarious, by the way. It is just a funny story. So Hewlett Packard uh, reports earnings. They beat by 11 cents. Uh, guide, the guidance was as expected. Revenues as expected. Uh, basically gains 5% on the day. Um, Xerox tells, uh, or was a Hewlett Packard? Yeah, so uh, the... Um, the, you know how they're trying to buy each other at the moment. So Xerox basically said, go away. We don't need you. Like that was their actual words. I think I put the quote below down in the scroller where they said, go away. We do not need you. Right. It's, I thought that was hilarious because they just basically had to spell it out like a, like a girl with some guy that's just following her all the time, always asking her, asking her out. She's finally just like, go away. <laughs> I, I don't want you. <laughs> So uh, that happened there with Hewlett Packard today, uh, but one of the stronger ones on the day because of earnings. Uh, we talked about Home Depot already. Newmont, uh, the gold mining stock, uh, stands out as well, although it did pull back towards the end of the day as gold pulled back about 1.7% on the day. Your weaker names in the S&P continue to be uh, travel, tourism, and energy. You've got 9% lower on American Airlines. United Airlines also hit 6.5% to the downside. Royal Caribbean, of course, uh, it was down 7.3%. That's, that's pretty impressive to the downside there. And uh, Nor uh, Norwegian Cruise Lines, uh, more downside, 7.6%. Those go down as your weaker ones in uh, the S&P 500. As for the sectors, here we go. We're going to do something a little different here today. Here is, over the last four days, your sector returns. So, including today, going back four days, this is what each sector in the S&P has done. Real estate is the... Um, holding up the best, showing the most relative strength. Real estate only lost 2%. Utilities only lost 3%. It doesn't get better from there. Technology now down double digits. Energy flirted with double digits, but was able to bounce a little bit off lows. You got a lot of sectors in only four days, right? Four days. That is, to me, is just incredible there, uh, the declines there. So I wanted to share that with you. For those of you that are looking to go shopping, uh, maybe you like to buy the relative strength. Some, there's always two sides. Some people like to buy the ones that didn't fall as much. Some people like to buy the severely discounted areas or at least look for opportunity inside those areas. So if you are a relative strength player and you like the idea of buying what seems to be a little bit strong at the moment, that's real estate, utilities, consumer staples as it should be. If you like buying discounts, deeply sold off stuff, you're looking, well, energy has always, it just, for as long as I know, energy has been deeply discounted. Technology obviously getting the Band-Aid ripped off there down 10%. And consumer discretionary, I would argue financials too, uh, there, there's a, a, you know, a fundamental reason there, you know, valuation perspective, if you're looking at that as a reason to be maybe diving into that. But that's just a different way for me to share things with you today. Looking at energy, broke to new lows today. That's as simple as that. Uh, transportation down 4.2%, well below the 200-day moving average at the moment. Uh, big decline there in transportation. It's going to be FedEx. Uh, as your big decliner, UPS, big decliner in there. And then your airline stocks, uh, American Airlines, Delta, Alaska Airlines, JetBlue, didn't matter there uh, to the downside. Basic materials, uh, big mover to the downside, lost 4%. Look at the sectors below in the little scroller. Look and see how every sector did, I mean, just brutal, right? Uh, so a lot of 4% down days there. Uh, broad sell-off in there. Newmont was the only one in this space that was positive for most of the day. It did finish negative. Every stock in the, in the uh, basic materials negative on the day. Uh, retail down 3.5% back below the 200-day moving average. You really don't like to see that too much. I mean, I was kind of cheering for retail. They were really fighting back there. Uh, gold pulled back today 1.7% uh, in the normal session. That ends the eight-day streak to the upside there. Uh, that's interesting, right? That's a sign of people saying, okay, I'm going to take some profits here. I might go try to use those profits to buy the market somewhere and, and start to kind of bet on a bounce. That's what it seemed like today, just in my humble opinion. I have no stats on that. 
Um, you got bonds hitting new highs as well. The 10 year hitting new lows as well. If you're shopping for a mortgage, you're loving this, man. You're like, come on. Let's see some freaking out here. I like it. Uh, and that's what you have for your sectors on the day. Interestingly, stock-wise, United Airlines, they had a comment come out today. Uh, a couple of price target decreases and everything. Um, United Airlines said, hey, travel demand to China has disappeared. Their words were literally, China, uh, travel demand to China has virtually disappeared. Uh, and well, rightfully so, but I mean, you can understand what kind of a hit they're going to take and that's being priced into the stock here as well. Um, you got Expedia, uh, doing some re, uh, restructuring. They're going to lay off about 3000 people. Hope you don't work for Expedia there. Uh, Macy's did beat on earnings as well. Uh, but a week on the day, uh, Palo Alto strong down day today. They beat by seven cents. They lowered their guidance as well. So the stock got hit there. What else do we have for you? Uh, earnings tomorrow. You, oh, Disney's getting a new CEO. How about that? Disney getting a new uh, CEO there. Uh, earnings tomorrow, you got Chesapeake, Fossil, Lowe's, uh, Smuckers, TJ Maxx, Apache's going to report in the evening, uh, Booking Holdings reporting in the evenings, and um, Limited Brands and Marriott Hotels. There's be some interesting ones there. Um, so that's what you have there. 24% of the S&P 500 is above the 50-day moving average. That's it. That's literally 124 stocks are only in the S&P 500 are still above the 50-day. Gives you an idea of the severity of the drop. Uh, four new highs today. You had Clorox, and then you had three medical companies, Perigo, uh, Regeneron, and something else, uh, but not a lot of new highs on the list today. 46 new lows. A lot of that's going to be oil and gas. It's going to be your weak retailers, uh, United, I'm sorry, um, Under Armour, Hasbro, Fossil, all the stocks that were already weak, uh, Kohl's that were already weak to the downside there. And then, of course, the travel stocks, Carnival Cruise Lines, American Airlines, TripAdvisor. Those were the bulk of, of the new lows today, if you were kind of taking a look there. Um, okay, 10% decline. I want to share this with you. This is from our class. Um, that we did for, uh, did for customers. And if you're one of our customers, the class called Market Decline Statistics, really great one there. We went through all the geeky stuff. I wanna share just one slide with you. Downturns in the market, how often do they happen? Here's a quick slide to show that uh, from 1949. So post-World War II, we're taking a look at all the downturns in the market. I have sort of highlighted this area here, downturns of 10% or more. The reason I highlight it is because it's supposed to happen about once a year, and it had not happened in the last year. We didn't get one. December of 2018 was the last time we had a 10% drop. We've been sort of hinting at it and kind of hoping for it along the way. This looks to be our opportunity here, given that we're already down 8% in the S&P 500. And of of course, this, this data here is monitoring. This is the S&P 500. So we've had no 10% declines overall. We're supposed to have about one a year, whether they're fast, whether they're slow. You can see that the average length of a 10% down day, uh, move is 114 days. So we're on four. Tomorrow will be day five, and it could be five days that we've to have a 10% or more uh, drop. I know some people would like it that way, get it over with, get it out of the way, all that happy stuff. But the point being that in this class, we talked about all the decline statistics, what happens afterwards, what happened beforehand, what happened six months, a year from now, all this great stuff. I just want to share this one slide with you so you could see we had not had a 10% down move. And so we would be uh, largely overdue. Right, so this seems to be overdue. It seems to be a reason, uh, a good reason to expect more downside and continue that 10, uh, get to the 10% drop. All right, um, not only that, we got Super Tuesday coming up. Eww. If you don't know, Super Tuesday is not good for the markets. Uh, leading up to Super Tuesday, the stock market averages a decline of 0.68%. I got some data from CNBC and Ken Show, uh, the 0.68%. We knew that one already. Um, but their stats say that of the last six times, the week leading up to uh, Super Tuesday, five of them were um, down. So only one time in the last six times. That takes you back to 1996, by the way. So we don't have the greatest of tailwinds here other than the entire world's markets being sold off more than two standard deviations, which is considered extremely oversold if you're following that sort of metric there. So other than that, we don't, we don't have a lot of good things here uh, helping us out in the short term. So uh, definitely a time to be shopping. I think looking around for opportunities, the things that you want to do. If you had money on the sidelines, why not dip your toe a little bit, right? You don't have to go all in just yet, but why not dip your toe? Take a shot. It's a discount, right? We're now... We've erased the year's gains. We're, we're back, you know, pulled back to probably where you decided 
that you wanted to put cash on the sideline. Come on, be honest with me. All right, as for the Fed, that's going to become something that uh, comes up in the news as well. Uh, rate cuts, right? March, there is now a 23% chance of a rate cut in March. It was almost zero Friday. So this is Tuesday. Go back Monday, go to Friday. Chance of a rate cut in March was essentially zero. That's it. If you go out to the June rate cut now, um, it, was, it is now, as of now, 44.6% uh, chance of a June rate cut from the Fed. I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it, I, but that's, that's what's priced in at the moment. 44.6% uh, chance. Um, if you go back to Friday and you just care just to see where it was, 1%. So as of last Friday, people were like a 1% chance that they cut rates by a quarter point. So all, everything I just quoted was by a quarter point. Um, that just goes to show how quickly people are yelling at the Fed going, hey, help us out, right? Come on, spur this market back up again. Do all your stuff you don't normally do, but you do now. Uh, so that's what you have there. Um, other than that, I think I felt like I talked a million miles an hour today. I just want to make sure to get it all in there for you. And I had all that extra stuff to share with you. Yeah, that's all I got for you there. I'll take a chance here and try to answer some of your questions. And let's see what you got. I love it. Uh, there you go. John says, I told myself last Wednesday to reduce, but then you told yourself, uh, oh, <laughs> Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can try to ask a question there. If I see it, I will ask, uh, try to answer it for you. Um, gold and silver is down. Yep, silver was down today all day, by the way. Uh, gold was only down the second part of the day. Um, are the sellers content with cash? I maintain the same comment there. I think there's people in gold that maybe have had it for a little bit. They recognize that they had a return that was double that of the S&P as of Friday. And they very likely just said, okay, let me take some of that money off the table. Maybe not all of it, but let me take some of that money off the table and slide it over to the market. At least take a chance with some of this discount here. I would bet that that is uh, something that's happened or is happening. Uh, you like your financials. There, uh, financials still remain, uh, well, uh, energy is the most undervalued area of the market, obviously, on a fundamental basis. But uh, financials remain uh, right there, right below average. So, I mean, it compared to where tech was and everything else was, uh, I can agree with uh, some of the fundamentals there in the financials. Yep. You think Intel's going to drop another 5% uh, throughout the week there? It wouldn't be, wouldn't be obviously odd at this point. There's room to do that. Um, that puts you back into the November, December range there. I think that if it did fall there, that's probably as far as it would go. But uh, for now, let the chaos continue. <laughs> Royal Caribbean. You like your Royal Caribbean? Maybe you, uh, you, you got it and you're saying, well, where, what, do I, what do I do here? Where's support? Um, hopefully right in this area. So if you go back to, uh, well, Christmas of uh, 2018, that big sell-off that we had there, we're kind of right in that area right now. You really, really don't want to see it holding in this area, preferably a bounce in the next day or two. It's very extended, though, so it's totally normal to expect a bounce here. Should you wait for the 10% drop or take your shot now? Well, it depends on what you're buying. So if you're buying strictly the market and you want to have the 10%, I think it's acceptable to assume that we're going to see a 10%. Maybe not tomorrow. I mean, maybe things cool off tomorrow or something. But um, I think it's acceptable to think that this could be the 10% pullback from highs. Uh, like I said, maybe not tomorrow. If you're looking at individual stocks or individual sectors, as you saw, uh, you're basically there, uh, especially with a lot of individual stocks. Just depends on what you're trying to pick up. Uh, sounds like you're trying to pick up the market. Yeah. Is there a way to see or even try the Jazz Cash app before we swap over? Um, I believe there's a page on the website. There's not much to the app. It's very, very simple right now. We're adding in um, the uh, mobile check deposit. We're adding in uh, bill pay. We're adding in um, uh, bill, bill pay, mobile check deposit, you know, where you snap a picture of the thing. Uh, joint accounts have been added there. Other than that, the app, I'm a very big believer on this, has to be clean and simple. Show me the balance. Show me who to contact if I have a problem. And show me how to move money. That's it. Uh, so there, it's not really anything like that's going to have some feature you were not expecting at the moment. Also, the, the Jazz Wealth app, right? Eh, slow, work in progress. We'll see. Uh, Tupperware, that's an interesting one to bring up there. So Tupperware has not been doing well, by the way. Uh, but Tupperware today, biggest down day on the, well, not the biggest down day, but the biggest down day on volume that we've seen in well over a year. Uh, doesn't look good for them, and it's also not one that 
has that same look as like a Royal Caribbean where it's so extended in the ultra short term that the algorithms and things will come by it. Uh, so this is one where I would say no need to try to pick the bottom on this one. I, I think you put it on a watch list and maybe it makes a comeback at some point, but I would not try to guess the bottom. Absolutely not. Time to cash out the Roth. Yeah, today's the day. Yeah. Wait, wait till we hit the low, the very low. Uh, I find it funny that uh, every now and then somebody says, oh my gosh, I need money for this or that, and they sell, and they even joke, you know, like, and I know I'm going to mark the bottom of the market. It's how it has to work. Yep. Again, with the market closing at lows, you don't like to see that. What we want, like yesterday, we attempted to bounce around 2 o'clock. That's always a good sign. It's actually normal historically. Uh, but we gave it all back at the end of the day, which gives you the hint, oh, we're not done selling, right? Today was the same thing. It was controlled and methodical, but there was no bounce at all, nothing. And at the end of the day, we just barely came off the lows, so we didn't close down 1,000 points on the Dow. I think we got down to 995, 996, something like that. What you want to see is some point where we either start the day lower and there's a, a, a definite mood change. People decide they want to take a shot. You're not seeing much in the way of people saying, okay, taking a shot right here. Go back to uh, December 2018, bleeding into January, and look at how that is right there. We had bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. It was nasty. And then all of a sudden, we started a little bit of a bounce, and then it was like a rocket ship. You could feel the momentum change. You can see it change. We don't have that right now. Yeah. Uh, Disney's new CEO, is it good or bad for them? Um, no, it's good. Uh, there's the guy that's taken over for the CEO. He's got the background there. He has the same vision. He's got the same approach and everything. Uh, so that's what investors are looking at. Is the new person coming in been a part of the company, have anything to do with the company? And Disney has a history of bringing from within. But um, also, do they have the same vision? Everything that Bob Iger just set up to do, is that going to continue? And I think everything they did to say Bob Iger sticking around till 2021, not as the CEO, but uh, that he's going to stick around and the new guy has the same vision, at least it's what's been reported, uh, I think is good news. I, I don't think anything changes much in Disney um, there. You got one portfolio with a mutual fund. Should you add a little or should you get physical silver? Um, well, that's a tough one. I don't know what mutual fund you have uh, in terms of performance or whatever it is. And physical silver, I, I don't know what the purpose is of buying that. The, what, so I, I'm leaning towards no on the silver. <laughs> Unless you're a doom and gloom person, you're like, you know, like a prepper and you just kind of believe that that's a physical commodity you should own. I don't judge. Some people like to do that. I've told the story about the guy that had physical gold sitting in his house, like the bricks of gold, multimillionaire, used them as doorstops. He had a different vision than me. I, I don't judge that. But if that works into your ultimate goal for the account that you have, then that, that's okay, as long as it fits that goal. Any data on how each generation is reacting? That's clever. You'd have to turn to somebody like a TD Ameritrade. They actually publish that data uh, on what their... Um, what different customers are doing, what different age groups are doing. I, I wouldn't have that data. Uh, but they do publish that, usually just after earnings. Their last earnings, they talked about what millennials were buying, Tesla, what they were selling, Tesla. <laughs> yeah. You've been shorting the Dow since Friday. Awesome. Hope you took some profits. How often do you see 2,000 points in two days? So if you have the Dow short, What's the probability that that ever happens again? <laughs> so hope you take some profits there. Um, when will you know what to buy? Uh, so I'm not sure what that means. So if you have existing investments and you want to add to them, that probably helps answer some of the question there. Um, but when will you know what to buy? Like you could start looking around and seeing what's holding up. If you like buying stocks that, that are relatively strong compared to the market, you could look for discounted areas. Uh, the only thing I'd probably stay away from at the moment is energy, just because that already had a pattern of being weak going into it. That seems like a little bit of a bottom picking area there. I'm not allowed to tell you what to do, but that seems like an area that people won't rush to right away. I figure people would probably go back to tech, software as a service, um, communication services, things like that. Um, imagine what happens if there is a big breakout here in the US. We're staying home, we're watching Netflix, we're watching TV, we're ordering in, you know, things like that. Like, that's probably where I would look a little bit. 
Can't give you an exact, uh, I'm not allowed to tell you an entry price on Apple. I can say that a lot of you uh, have been looking to buy Apple. So you've got, let's see, just in, since we hit those highs there and kind of chopped around at highs, you've got where if we go to the low today, you got a 12% pullback. So if you found Apple to be 12% on sale, is that a good deal to you or you want to shoot for more? I think my main comment about buying anything here is it's not an all or none moment in time. Doesn't feel like it, right? So it's not a moment to say, I had $50,000 on the sidelines and I need to get it committed. I need to put it all, all in. I don't think that's the answer here. You, you can do what you want to do, but I think the answer is to step in little by little. And don't worry about stepping in on the way up. <laughs> For God's sakes, it's nice to buy on the way down, but if things start to turn and you feel good about it and everything, you know, the mindset and momentum changes, it's okay to add some on the way up too. A lot of people don't like to do that, but you certainly can. <laughs> I love it. Should you hold or, can, uh, or sell out of your portfolio as the beginning of a recession? Think of your time horizon. If you're investing for the next 20 years, why are you selling, right? Let's go shopping. So think of it that way. If you're investing for the end of this year, your time frame is different and therefore you need to make different decisions, right? But think of your time frame. Don't think about like a Warren Buffett here. He was saying the other day, nothing, I don't care what happens. I'm not changing anything. I'm not selling anything, right? It's the time frame. He's thinking 10 years out, 20 years out. So if that's your time frame, what, what are you panicking for, right? It's an opportunity. You bought, some, you tried to mark the bottom for us. I bought some spy puts there. Uh, so the market should be higher tomorrow. <laughs> yep. Uh, Apple will have a miss uh, due to China sales. Yep, they've already commented on that. The question is, is it, be, is it already priced in? That's the tough part there. Is it priced in now and everything will be just kind of normal uh, with the way people price things lately? Yep. Can you explain a qualified dividend or an ordinary dividend? One is treated as capital gains and one is treated as ordinary income. Um, you can look at the stock individually, like REITs typically all go in the same way, if it, unless it's a, like a hybrid REIT sort of thing um, versus individual stocks, but that's the gist of it. I mean, you're either getting taxed at long-term capital gains, which is obviously a savings, or your ordinary income. So, um, and your statements actually show it, by the way. So you're, if you, you have like a prior, uh, report from your brokerage firm, it'll actually show qualified and um, it, it'll, it puts it on there. I forget, I was trying to think of the category that it puts it in. I can't picture it, but um, God, I know it's going to hit me. I can't think of it. I'm sorry, but it's on the statements there. You can actually see it. Okay. I don't know. I have no idea about China cashing in dollars. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> you got an ad for Carnival for 35 a night? Man, send it this way, man. Send, send it over. I would go on, if I had the time, I would certainly go on a cruise right now with no concern at all. I, I don't know why. I just, take me to Coco Cay. Uh, that's Royal Caribbean, but take me to Coco Cay for a few days. I'm totally cool with that, man. That, that is probably the coolest place, coolest private island on the planet in, in, from what little private islands I've seen. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, hey, have a great rest of your day. Let's see what happens tomorrow. I'm excited. I love it. I get excited when the markets fall. I hope you do too. We will be uh, back tomorrow and I appreciate you guys sticking uh, around and checking things out. Hope you enjoyed the extra data today. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings and enjoy. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.